Good evening, guys. The uh, preparations for our seven-month RV road trip are uh, going well. But now I need to do something with all this salmon that we caught this summer. And we really didn't catch that much salmon. We only got 47 pounds of it because we decided to uh, take it easy and we can only eat so much when we're on the road. If we were home, we probably would have caught a lot more fish. But on the road, we only have so much room in the RV freezer. So we're going to can these things up in mason jars with the pressure cooker. And I'm also going to smoke some. Some people like to can their salmon with the skin on. That is not the way I like to do it. So I will uh, be stripping the skin off of all of these fillets. So everybody cans salmon. But this year, I'm gonna try canning some halibut. Here's what we're left with. Two bowls of salmon and a heaping bowl of halibut. One of the nice things about canning is that the uh, cooking process is so long and so intense that the uh, little pin bones on the salmon just disintegrate so you don't have to worry about picking those out. Now I'm going to uh, brine some salmon so we can smoke it as well. And the trick to smoking and canning salmon is to only smoke it for about an hour, hour and a half max. Because if you go too much further, the uh, smoky flavor will be so intense by the time you finish the cooking process that it's just not going to taste very good. Right here I have a very simple dry brine. I actually got it from uh, that show North to Alaska with Larry Zonka and that guy Smokey Joe would uh, do a little cooking segment. But this is nothing but a half a cup of salt, one cup of sugar, and one cup of brown sugar. We choose to use like sea salt and organic and uh, cane sugar products, but you can use whatever you like. So what I'm gonna do now is take the pieces of salmon and halibut that I'd like to smoke and get them brining. So here's what we're left with, some of each, some in uh, the dry brine and then some ready for uh, regular old mason jars. I'm going to let it sit in the fridge overnight and then tomorrow morning I'll hit the ground running and fire up the smoker and pressure cooker. Good morning from Seward, Alaska. It's time to get this day started. These are the mason jars I'm working with. They are actually used. We've had them for years. I ran them through the dishwasher uh, when we first like got done with whatever was in them before. And uh, I rinsed them out now because they were sitting on our basement and I wanted to make sure there were no extra uh, spiders or proteins in there. If you're going to be canning jams and uh, things that need a water bath instead of a uh, pressure cooker, you need to boil these uh, jars to make sure they're completely sanitary. I always like to use less salt on uh, things than it calls for, so I'm going to put a quarter teaspoon in the bottom of all of these jars. You can always add more salt, but you can rarely take it away in a dish. Now it's time to pack these jars full of our Copper River Red Salmon and Gulf of Alaska Halibut. I like to kick things up a notch by adding a little bit of pepper and garlic to my jars. That should be enough and I'm going to leave some jars plain. Now it's time to make sure 
that the uh, surface and edges of these mason jars is clean. Some people uh, leave like half an inch of uh, headroom is what it's called. So like you pack the jar only so high. My rule of thumb is I like to go to right here where the uh, threads end. While I'm waiting for the uh, lids to boil, I'll introduce you to our pressure canner. We have a pretty large model because it's, I'll call it an Alaska size model because on most years when we're not hitting the road, we do can up a lot and uh, more you can do in one batch is better. So here's our pressure cooker and I filled it up with about three quarts of water. The lids have uh, been boiled for a while so the seals are nice and soft and they're kind of sanitized. Never reuse old lids. On the lid for the pressure cooker, there is a pressure gauge. There's some safety considerations to uh, keep in mind when using pressure cookers, but this is not the video to learn about them. But pretty much just look at the seals and make sure everything's functioning and everything locks down properly on the cooker. Now we're putting the bands on. And all you need to do is just kind of lightly finger tighten them on. You do not need to crank them onto there. Now it's simply a matter of turning the stove on, setting this little plate in there so the uh, glass jars are not directly on the heat source, and loading the jars. I will say that a glass top stove is the worst possible thing to do this on because you can't control your heat consistently. That being said, it is possible. We've been doing it for years, but it's kind of a pain in the ass because the uh, glass cooktop clicks on and off. Here's the final jars. We are able to fit 14 of them in at one time. And that's 14 easy meals that are shelf stable. It's time to put this lid on and it lines up a very specific direction. Okay, that goes like so. And I spin and lock it into place. Then there's this weighted pressure jobber thing and it fits right there. And now the waiting begins. I am going to uh, ideally get this up to 10 pounds of pressure and hold it there for 90 to 100 minutes. So I decided to get this batch of uh, jars going in the pressure cooker before I start smoking because it's going to be a long process and I can be uh, doing other things while this is just sitting here doing nothing. So now I need to go outside and get the smoker ready. I'm going to set up the smoker right out here off our front deck. This is a good spot for it. You never really want to put it on a wood deck because it could potentially catch fire. But right here is a good spot. It's also underneath our uh, roof area, covered area of our front porch. We're starting to uh, build up some pressure inside the cooker. And once we have a uh, good amount of pressure, this little thing right here is going to go pop up and stay up until it cools down. Now I'm going to start loading these racks up with fish, but I'm going to uh, make my cleanup a lot easier by giving them a little wipe down with uh, some olive oil. We don't like using Pam or any of those chemical things. We try to keep stuff as natural as possible because then you end up defeating the whole purpose of all this effort to uh, catch wild game if you're putting crap and other things into this uh, food prep. That little piece just popped up. Now I need to pay close attention to the pressure gauge because uh, yeah, this thing could turn into a bomb if you kind of forget about it. Here's what the salmon looks like that's been sitting in the brine all night long. Now I'm gonna cut it up into pieces for the racks. So keep in mind, this is not the way you're going to want to do it for uh, normal smoking applications. 
under uh, normal smoking conditions, you're going to want to let all these fillets uh, dry and get tacky. But since I'm going to be putting them in the pressure cooker, all I really need to do is get that hint of uh, smoky flavor onto them and then shove them in the mason jars. Today I'm going to be using alder chips. You can't go wrong uh, by using these. They, uh, you can get them in the grocery stores up here and probably most Walmarts. But yeah, it's just a good uh, wood for smoking. Plug it in. Put this on first. Now, set that right in there. And it'll start smoking shortly. Our uh, pressure gauge is nearing the 10 pound mark. Now I just need to make sure that we do not go above. So I'm dropping the temperature down on our glass top stove. So it's probably going to settle at uh, 4 if I remember correctly. And taking a quick peek outside here, I see smoke coming from the smoker. What a novel concept. So it's doing its thing. And it's kind of starting to rain. So now I got some more downtime. No shortage of things to do around here because we're preparing for a seven month road trip. The big chief has quit chiefing. That can only mean one thing. We need more uh, wood chips. Time's up and we've done a total of 100 minutes, around 10 pounds of pressure. So now the waiting game begins as we let this pressure gauge drop all the way down to zero and then for this little bugger to drop back down. When that actually happens, it'll be safe to open the pressure cooker. That also means that the smoker should be done. Not done, but ready to be taken out. All right, I need to use both hands. Okay, that's better. There we go. That looks just about perfect. The house is starting to smell really good. This is the uh, pile of salmon that I pulled out of the smoker. Even though it looks like it could be edible, it is still completely raw. And here's the experimental chunks of halibut that are going to be going in next. And the pressure's dropped to 7 pounds. Great, I really messed up now. I just dropped the halibut fillets. Yeah, that sucked. I uh, am going to need to keep those ones uh, separate. I washed them off in the sink and I got like 99% of the spruce needles and gravel and sand off. So that could be the uh, crunchy batch and that will be the non-crunchy batch. All right, do your thing. Here we go, the smoked salmon is all put into the jars and now I'm gonna doctor them up even a little bit further. I didn't fill the uh, bigger jars all the way full because I wanted to spread it out. One can only eat so much smoked salmon. Correction, one should only eat so much smoked salmon in one sitting. Garlic there, jalapeno there, some of these red peppers there. Take a jalapeno and a red pepper there. Now, I have a secret ingredient. When we were in Turkey about, I don't know, January-ish of 2015, we went to the spice market and got all kinds of great stuff. These are red pepper flakes uh, that you buy there. Very similar to the uh, ones that you would see at a pizza parlor here. But these are a million times better. Never done this before, but I'm pretty sure it's going to uh, taste great. I'm gonna sprinkle some in probably most all of these jars. Well, I'm still waiting for the uh, pressure cooker to release its pressure. It's down to about one to two pounds. Zero pressure, still up. It just went down as I was walking away from that last shot. The second batch is all set to uh, be pressure cooked. I haven't been very good at uh, recording for the past few hours because I ran another batch through the canner. And now I have a third batch going because there were three, no, three jars that would not fit into the uh, canner last time. So I'm doing that whole process for just three jars. Kind of annoying. But I also got ambitious and decided to take on making jam out of our... Uh, blueberries and raspberries that we uh, got this summer. So yeah, good stuff. That doesn't go in the uh, canner though. That's just a uh, simple water bath. So yeah, 
Things are looking good over here. These are uh, all but three of our jars of salmon that we're going to take on the road with us. You can really uh, see the difference in the smoky color of the smoked salmon compared to regular old canned salmon. Well guys, I'm finished and I am exhausted. Uh, it's a long day, got a ton of uh, good eats here, and uh, yeah, you know, it's worth it. You know, take the time to catch it, prepare it, and you know, having some uh, nice healthy food is uh, really valuable. So, this video is now over. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends, and most importantly, enjoy the ride.